Good morning, um, everybody who's on the stream now, which is probably nobody, but shout out if you are there. I'm not looking at my analytics right now, so I don't know if there's anybody waiting or not. And it's here in the States. It's r pretty early in the morning. Um, it's about uh, almost 8 o'clock here. Um, but I was, I'm going to try doing some streams in the morning because I know there's a lot of people... Um, in the Atari community in general that are in Europe. In fact, there's probably more there that are interested in this stuff than there are here in the States. That's, I don't know that for sure, it just kind of seems that way. Um, today, we're gonna be playing Kings of Edom. Um, if you aren't familiar, this is a recent uh, release for the Atari Jaguar. Uh, it's uh, done by a individual named Phobos, and let me pull up the browser tab here. Yeah. So, it's a recent release. I, th I think it came out in October. Uh, he's been in development for it for just about a year, maybe a little bit longer, but it didn't seem like it, take him, it took him that long uh, to put this together. Um, so, uh, he did a pre-order uh, to come up with of 100 copies, and those sold out pretty quick. Uh, I got in on that fairly early as well. It, definitely the type of game I'm into, uh, something with RPG elements. I'm actually not, well, I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience with roguelikes, to tell you the truth, but I really enjoyed this one, even though um, somebody, if you're watching me play, you might think it's a little repetitive, and it is. It is a little repetitive, but... The turnaround time's pretty quick. You can, you know, in an evening, spend an hour or two and and uh, get through a round before you die, basically, or get to the end of the dungeon. Um, anyways, came out recently. If you aren't familiar with his work, uh, he's done quite a few games uh, so far for for the Jag specifically. I believe he's done some Vectrex stuff too, which is awesome that somebody's willing to put in the effort for the Vectrex. I've I've only played a Vectrex maybe once or twice. My brother had one when I was really, really little that he found at a thrift store or something. And uh, yeah, I remember playing it then. Uh, I've never seen one or, or played one since, but really interesting machine. Uh, the Vector graphics are really cool. Anyways, he's done, I know he's done at least one game for that. He's probably done a couple. But for the the Jag, he has another game that's coming up called, uh, uh, oh, I forgot what it's called, uh, Ast Asteroite Long Play. That's what this video says anyways. Um, anyways, that's coming along uh, really uh, smoothly, it seems like, according to the videos that he posts. And uh, I'm, ex I'm excited to play that one too. It's more of a, I don't, I don't believe I have any audio going on here. But uh, it's a platformer, more like a, a Metroid vein, uh, or Metroid game. Uh, I almost said Metroidvania. I guess that's what you would call it. But that's what the genre is called nowadays. Um, anyways, it's looking pretty good. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing, I'm particularly not into Metroid games, but it's cool to see stuff, uh, to see games at at this quality level in the homebrew scene, and and so I, I'm looking forward to supporting that future work as well. Uh, if if you're interested in some of his other work, he's he's done a few arcade games. Uh, this one's called Sp Spidex or Spidey X, something like that. Um, I have a copy of this. I may play it later. Maybe we'll do another stream for just Spidey X and Wormhole. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, he has this one, which is you just rotate around the center of something uh, of a web, and and you and you just and you destroy the bugs. And I believe there's boss battles too. And it seemed like the last time I played it, it was kind of random when the boss battles came up. Uh, what the level content actually was, was random. Um, and and Wormhole 2000 seemed that way too. Wormhole 2000 kind of feel, feels a little bit more like Tempest. It's nowhere near the same quality level, but it's still a fun arcade shooter. You um, have these tunnels of enemies come up, if I remember correctly. Uh, and I don't know if you have to blow them all up. I think they just come in waves. Um, and you have to survive and I believe there's boss battles with that one, too. Um, excuse me Yeah, so uh, if you're interested in those those are available right now on songbird productions um, I'm not sponsored or anything by them, but I uh, just I wanted to give these games 
a little bit of a highlight on a live stream. I know Kings of Edom has been reviewed by several people on YouTube, but I don't think anybody's actually live streamed it. And so, and this will just turn into another one of those videos for sure. But um, anyways, let's, uh, let's get, let's get to the game. Is anybody there? Shout out if you're there. We can chat for a bit. Doing this in the morning may be the worst time uh, because everybody in the States is waking up and everybody in England is at work. I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, or in Europe is at work, at least. Um, yeah, let's go back to our Let's Play. So let me know if the audio levels are good or bad. Uh, they should be pretty good. I, I did some testing before the stream, so they should be okay. Um, yeah, let's get started. So the title screen, the title screen isn't too much to look at. It's uh, it's just a basic song going on. Um, the the text for the the logo is is cool. Would have been cool to have like a castle background or something to go along with this or a dungeon. Um, Would have been awesome. Um, yeah. So here we are. We're in this forest. Um, and if you're familiar with roguelikes, this will be nothing new. Uh, they're randomly generated areas, these, these square areas connected by randomly generated paths. Um, this game, there isn't too much mix up in the, the macro layout of these areas. It's pretty much on like a 7x3 grid for most of the dungeons, and I think it expands to a 4x7 or something, or a little bit wider. can't remember. Um, and so the maps aren't too hard to navigate. Uh, but... Each room is going to be randomly generated in terms of content. So the the, the uh, item drops are randomly generated and the enemies are random, randomly generated. So the goal of this game is pretty simple. You have to find all of these crowns, which there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 crowns. Yep. Oh, it says 11 crowns right down there at the bottom. <laughs> Anyways, I have four out of eleven. I've put about two or three hours into this, and um, somebody's keeping a tally on Atari Age. Uh, let me see if I can find that really quick because there is Atari Age Kings of Edom crowns. I'm pretty sure. Oh, where is that? Somebody was talking about it recently. They posted a link. Let's see if we can find that. Crowns. Under the influence of hunger. I think that's the thread. And somewhere here, somebody's keeping a tally. Oh, wow. There are quite a few pages in, it looks like. Oh, somebody has at least, what is that, seven? Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, looks like somebody got... Somebody won. It seemed like, yeah, so Friday, this last Friday was the, when that happened. Um, last time I looked at this was sometime last week, and nobody had won yet, but it looks like somebody got it. That's good. Um, I wonder how many hours he put in. Does it say? Does it say? Make it to six. It is getting very even now in the race for third place. Still, there's a chance to challenge LS650 for the second place. Hmm. Well, anyways, it's been pretty difficult. I've I put I've put a few hours into this, three or four, and I have uh, I guess it's a crown per hour. So I don't know if I'll ever get all the crowns. Uh, maybe I'll <laughs> decide to do that. It's it's a little repetitive for me. I um so I don't know if I'll get that far, but it is enjoyable. Um, so if roguelikes are your thing, and if you want a bit of a challenge in terms of s stamina, <laughs> seeing if you can. Uh, take uh, the repeat, well, then uh, this might be your cup of tea. Anyways, let's get back to the game. So, I'm going to set my stats, and I, I think the way you set the stats is a little bit silly, because you use left and right to enable disable which stats are actually getting experience points when you kill enemies, and I don't know why Phobos decided to do this, because he has bunch of extra buttons at his disposal. He has at least two extra buttons at his disposal. 
and he could have used those for this menu. Uh, the, he has uh, the B and the A button, I believe. Oh no, he has all three. You have to press the option button again to get back out. So he has all three buttons he could have used to enable and disable. Uh, but um, yeah, he doesn't have that. You hit left and right to enable and disable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch these to dexterity. And our hit points is already really high. Um, if I remember right, the manual said each stat has, so on the far right column is the level of the stat. And then the other columns are the experience points. Um, and I think the highest you can get for any stat is 30, if I, if I remember correctly. And so, and some stats carry over and it looks like hit points carries over because it's really weird that that's such a high level. Uh, hit points, and I believe intelligence no intelligence is different than the last time i played it seemed like there's another stat that carries over i can't remember but we're gonna go over uh we're not gonna do intelligence we're going to do two hit bonus because i think that helps with our accuracy as well um i would have to bust open the manual to remind myself it seemed like there's some overlap between stats which i thought was kind of silly too uh, in my head, it's like you have one stat for one thing, just to keep things simple. But um, I know there is some, uh, there are some stats that are specific f to melee attacks, which I don't know why you would ever want to use. Maybe there's a boss battle or something that I'm not aware of in this game that there's an advantage to using melee. I'm not sure. Um, and then another, the other stat uh, is applicable to when you have weapons equipped. So yeah. Um, if anybody's watching, please shout out in the chat. I'd love to talk to you. So, let me know if you have any questions about the game or about what I've been doing with uh, my JAG development. I'm more than willing to talk about what I can talk about uh, without spoiling too much. So, Anyways, stat set. We are given a few items here, and I believe, if you look at my gold, it's at 529. So my gold carried over from my last playthrough. When you f start this game fresh, you do not have that much gold, so I know for sure um, that I got at least that. So we're going to get some few potions, and I'm going to stock up on some bread. So bread, or food, if you'll see down there towards the bottom left, it says 609. If I take a step and go back into the menu, it says 608 now. So um that's basically how many steps you can take before hunger starts to whittle your HP down. So, gotta in the first few dungeons, that's a real concern. It seems like later you've gathered so much food that it really doesn't matter anymore. Ah, I accidentally crushed that key. I shouldn't have done that. So you can move blocks around, and I don't know if you noticed there was a key there. <laughs> I pushed the block on top of it. It uh, removed it from the game. Uh, destroyed it. Okay, so, saw an enemy, oh, I have no keys, I destroyed the one key I needed, bummer, oh, there's another one, you have to, you have to walk over an object and click a button, which is important, because there's a lot of items that spawn, because items randomly spawn, there's a lot of items that you've already gotten, in terms of equipment, armor, shields, those kinds of things, and, and so you don't want to get them again. One second, I am just realized I am not hearing the Jaguar's audio. I'm pretty sure it's working. I am getting levels. Huh. Maybe it's my headphones. One second. Ah, uh, yeah. Wire was just pulled a little bit. Okay. There we go. Die, slime. I like how they're landing every hit on me, but... Yeah, I, I feel like the, the accuracy stat's a little low at the beginning, but that's why I set my... my uh, stat gain, whatever you want to call that, to dexterity right at the beginning of the game, because... Nothing bothers me more than swinging my sword and hitting air over and over again. So. Oh, look at all that gold. 35 gold. Okay, let's use one of my keys. 
but usually I'm more systematic about searching the map and I'll show you there's an overworld map we can take a look at I wanted to walk around a bit more before I showed that I'm finding lots of bread come on another key okay you may have figured out the layout for these areas already but it's pretty simple ah I'm just glad most of these guys are going down with one hit. It seems easier. Man, somebody left their whole key ring in this place. Oh. Uh, well, I better heal up here. So later on, you do get magic spells, which make fighting a bit easier. Um, particularly the healing spell becomes really important later on. Because it doesn't seem like there's enough gold around to keep your inventory stocked with uh, potions. I don't know how random that is. It feels like it's been, um, the chances have been uh, reduced in favor of not finding gold. Again, it could just be a random number though. I am not privy to exactly what the programmer did in that regard. Okay, let's take a look at the overworld map. So, he has a nice uh, generated overworld map. I imagine it generates each time you load because it takes a second or two to actually make the transition into this screen. Um, which it's interesting it takes that long to draw, uh, to scan through that array and draw it, but um, but it's there, it works, and I'm glad it's there because even though the layout for these dungeons is simple, it you can get lost pretty easy, easily just because of the similarity between areas. And so, anyways, if you, you can see up here that little X, that's us right there. Um, and these blue blocks, I believe, are blocks, movable blocks, and the gray block there is uh, one of the gateways, which I think is where we could see how many crowns we had, and the blue blocks, which you may, uh, looks like you can see those on the stream, um, is the shop. So, and I believe there's one more block type, which is the yellow block, which is the gateway to the next dungeon, um, which we should run into that pretty soon. So, so sometimes the enemies pop up in the corridors as well. So you have to be a little bit aware of that. I guess I should have equipped all this armor and stuff I've been picking up. Got a shield now, equip that, and uh, leather armor. A Karakasura breastplate, or however you say that. And nothing under these blocks. Striking out. Break it out on all of them. Okay, let's keep going. So, if you're watching the stream later, um, it's been almost exactly a year <laughs> since the last time I live streamed. We did a uh, an impromptu um, turkey bowl with uh, playing brutal sports football with a couple of my brothers. Um, and that was fun. So I, but I'm planning on doing some more streams. Uh, I've been working on Crescent Memories for coming up on five years now. <laughs> so that needs to be over with soon. I need to get that done. Um, I want it done and it's going to get done. And so this, this coming month, I'm going to be putting quite a bit of time in it. I'm actually taking some work off. And so, um, I'm going to be spending a lot of that time just working on Crescent Memories. I want it finished. Oh, there's one up here in the corner. Let's go check that out. Um, yeah, so these streams, I'm planning on uh, spending quite a bit of time uh, playing some games. I, I, I find I'm not playing that many games anymore. Um, and I, because it kind of feels like a waste of time, 
I do enjoy it when I do. It just, it's getting started as the hard part. Oh, I didn't really need to pick that up. Okay, so I picked up this, this armor here. And I didn't really need to pick it up. So I'm going to drop that item with C. And confirm. Don't need it. Uh, something I wish you could do in this game was sell some of the extra items that you pick up. But as far as I can tell, there's no way of doing that. I thought we almost had this. Oh, I guess we have a whole other column here. Let's go check that out. Yeah, I did not search this dungeon very efficiently. Kind of have a system for it now. At least I did. It's been a, it's been a week or so since I last played this, so. Hey. Yeah, so this game is pretty new, Jasper. Thanks for joining us, by the way. Um, this came out just a little while ago. In fact, let me just, uh, I'm going to pause here really quick. And I'll show you really uh, where you can check out if you want to learn a little bit more about it. So, I talked about it a bit earlier in the stream, but since you're here, I'll, I'll give you the VIP treatment. Um, so, Kings of Edom, it came out, I think it was October was the first hundred copies that they produced, uh, that Songbird produced. And um, they did a pre-order on that. That sold out pretty quickly. I think it was just a few days that sold out. But he is doing a second run, which I believe is delivering sometime in December. So if you want a Christmas present, I think you can get it then. Um, in terms of quality of the re release in, in relation to other homebrew, this is really, really high quality. It's a fun game, especially if you like roguelikes. It feels... Um, like the older roguelikes but with a nice coat of paint so if you if you enjoy those games it's very much uh worth worth your money and your time um yeah it's good though uh yeah phobos has been doing some good releases that's the name of the developer at least his his handle um he's also done quite a few other games like uh spidey x which is uh just an arcade shooter and then wormhole which is another arcade shooter where you where you spin around a center point and you blow up enemies so if you like those arcade type games i personally think this is a little too much but um uh for a new jaguar game but uh, they they are fun games and so if you are interested in buying new games for the jag it's definitely worth it yep new atari jaguar game um there's uh, um if you're not familiar with the 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 homebrew scene for the Jaguar, it's, it's pretty active. It's, it's nowhere near like the NES or even the Game Boy. Like I, I was diving into the Game Boy and NES homebrew scene, uh, a little bit, a few weeks ago. I, I hadn't looked at it for a while and it's exploded. Like there's almost always a Kickstarter for a Game Boy, like an original, uh, Game Boy or an NES, uh, Nintendo Entertainment System release. Um, and so it's, it's cool to see, all these retro systems getting so much love. The Jaguar is, is slow, uh, is smaller because it the, the console wasn't really successful in its time, um, and it's been it's been difficult to to develop for. Um, recently, there's been some new tools though, and I'm planning on doing some streams on that in the future for developing new games for the Jag. It's actually become quite accessible uh, if you know a little bit of code. Uh, if, you don't have to learn assembly code if you don't if you don't want to in order to program for the Jag, which is which is a big deal, um, at least for me. But yeah, uh, yeah. So if you're interested, there's plenty of new games uh, coming out for the Jag. Uh, so Songbird is a is uh, one publisher of these new games. Another one is Atari Age. Let me just jump over there really quick. Sorry, I know you're probably. Um, <laughs> looking forward to seeing the game uh let me talk about i just i'm i'm always excited to talk about this when somebody's not familiar about it because it really is cool to see these old atari consoles getting getting some love uh so store so on atari age there's quite a few uh new games as well so astro astro storm's a new one i think that came out last year the year before brains and bronze or brawn and brains came out last year as well there's also some licensed releases. So Defender for the Crown was never originally released on the Jag either. It was released on all sorts of platforms back in the day. Um, but uh, there is a very talented programmer uh, who has uh, of the handle Cyrano Jones, who um, who's been porting a lot of games from the Atari ST to the Atari Jaguar. So it's it's cool to see that. 
Escape from 2042. Yeah, there's quite a few of these licensed releases, like Fantasy Dizzy World. That's a series, uh, a retro series that people love. Um, but yeah, lots of new games. <laughs> lots of things you can sink your money into. <laughs> Um, and, uh, just so you know, I actually developed JAG games too. If you're, if you're interested in seeing a little bit of what I have worked on, which isn't much I, I did. So the only thing I've officially released in terms of a game is a Flappy Bird clone on, on the Atari Jaguar, which is called Flappy McFur. Um, I'm planning on actually, that was, I, I've been using the Jaguar as a platform to learn to code, which is probably the worst way to do it, but I've, I've, been at it for about five or six years now and I've gotten I've gotten a lot better at coding I'm still not amazing but um, I, I'm planning on re-releasing Flappy McFur I did a I rebuilt that from the ground up so it's a lot more solid than the original release it's still very similar to the original release it's just under the hood it's it's a lot better and then um, I I'm also have two other games they're gonna be released here soon there's a trailer on on Jag Corners channel if you want to check it out it's called Crescent Memories uh, one is a Pong clone, but it has some, I've mixed up the formula just a little bit in that game. And the other one is a menu-driven survival game. And so it's basically just watching your stats, making sure all your people stay alive. Um, I'm thinking about adding some mini games into it to make it a little, give it a little more depth. Um, but yeah, uh, and I'm, I've been working on that for years now. I want to get it done here in the next few months, or at least close to finish. That way I can... I can work on the last few, you know, the last 5% over the next year and get it out. So anyways, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a really cool community to keep tabs, tabs on uh, because right now there aren't a lot of us making uh, games, especially games that look and play good, um, but that's changing. And it's it, in the last five years, things have changed pretty quickly in, in the JAG community and it's only speeding up. There's a lot more people collecting for the console now. Um, and so this might be a little bit of a, a downer, but uh, there's if you look at eBay prices for certain games, like common games for the Jaguar, like Cybermorph and stuff, prices have doubled and sometimes tripled just in the last couple of years. Um, and so it can be hard to get into the physical uh, part of the Jaguar scene. And the other issue is, is emulation isn't that great either. And a lot of these people that are making new games are not selling ROMs digitally. They're not doing digital sales yet. That's kind of changing, um, but there is some good news. There, there is some silver lining to this dark cloud in the Jaguar community. Uh, just recently, the uh, first flash uh, SD card reader for the Jaguar came out. It's called the Game Drive, and so you can get one of those. It's a little expensive, but it gives you access to almost everything in the ja Jaguar library. They're still working on CD emulation, but that isn't that big of a deal. There's only 13 CD games that were released on the Jaguar, and I think there was only a, a few homebrew games that were released on CD that you still can't get in ROM form. Maybe I need to go actually do the research on that. I'm not entirely sure. I'm I would guess that there's at least some. Um, but yeah, you, so you can get a console, get the SD card reader, and go there. I know there's been rumors of some of these homebrew releases being sold uh, on an SD card rather than a cartridge to reduce costs. Um, I don't know, I I haven't seen anything official yet though. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, th that may not happen, but uh, yeah, we'll see. They, the cool thing about the, the JAG, uh, the game drive, the JAG game drive, is that developers can lock the code to that device. Um, so, and that's attractive to developers because it means it protects their content from being just spread around on the internet. So, um, yeah, anyways, let's get back to playing. Let me know if you have any more questions. I, I've, uh, I've grown up, uh, loving the Atari Jaguar and, and I know, I know some things about it. <laughs> so if you, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them. Oh, good. I had a key for that. I think we're almost done with this area. We'll be going to a new dungeon here in just a minute. Yeah, do you collect for anything specifically right now? 
Other than the jag, I assume you're not doing the jag, but... My health isn't doing very good. I did play this just a little bit last night, and I forgot how hard this first this first dungeon is. It's uh, a bit difficult. Maybe I was just better a week ago. I don't know. Well, while well, you're thinking about that, I I actually had darn it. <laughs> I crushed that gold. <laughs> um, I. I've actually, I do collect, I, I collect for a few systems. Um, my primary system now is the, is the Atari Jaguar, and so I, it's what I choose to sink most of my money into nowadays. I've, I've actually sold off a lot of other stuff that I've had. Um, the only thing that I keep nowadays, uh, besides Atari Jaguar stuff, is, um, is uh, anything I had, have nostalgia for, so anything I grew up with. I do collect for Jaguar, but I most uh, mostly just have a little bit of everything retro. I'm kind of the same way right now. Again, like I said, I, I collect anything I have nostalgia for, and I grew up with quite a few different systems um, growing up, and and it's I, I found that a lot more enjoyable. I end up taking like for family parties and stuff. What I'll do is I'll pick a system and take it there, and and let my nieces and nephews play because. Um, Obviously, they're not going to grow up with those systems, and so it, it's it's fun to see. It's cool to see how these old games still hold that that power to entertain um, after all these years. After kids have all these, you know, fancy these fancy cell phones and all the graphics and stuff, and and it's it's cool to see that these games still have a lot of power. But. Yeah, the, the Jaguar is uh, kind of a, yeah, the last few years have been really bad in terms of prices on the Jaguar. And I have my my official collection, so all of the official releases, I have everything except for one thing, and it's been bugging me to no end why I can't get it. But I, I need a box for Wolfenstein 3D. Um, I, I don't have a box for Wolfenstein 3D. That's the last thing I need. And I have been watching eBay, primarily eBay because it's hard to find Jag stuff anywhere else. I have kept an eye on uh, like local um, classifieds, and um, you don't see much Jag stuff there, but uh, but also Facebook. And for some reason, there are no box copies or or just boxes for Wolfenstein. It's it's like somebody a few years ago bought all the copies of Wolfenstein, separated the boxes from the cartridges, threw away the boxes, and they sell just the cartridges. Um, it's a bit frustrating. So, but one day, I may get it. It's it's not a huge deal to me anymore. But, yeah. Yeah, um, sharing, sharing the old games is a lot of fun. Uh, with COVID, it's obviously been a bit harder. But, um, it's been more difficult because people haven't been getting together at all. But I look forward to doing it again. I'm I I was uh, planning on doing something for Thanksgiving, but it turns out most of my family, like uh, my siblings, anybody who's married, is going to their in-laws and stuff like that. And so, um, so this year, I'm it'll be kind of a small group for our family, and that's okay. It'll be good to spend some time with the parents. Lots of gold. Well, not lots of gold. One gold. <laughs> Die. Got him. Yeah, I got... I... Um, my Jaguar, specifically, I, I have a few Jags, and I have one that, that's called... Uh, maybe I'll get that on the stream one day. It's called Jag in, the Bo uh, Jag in the Box. And it's just a box that I put a Jaguar in, mounted an LCD screen, got a converter box for it and everything. Um, that I can easily carry around to events, family events to, and really the main reason why, the main reason why I take it is to show the new games <laughs> to my brothers, uh, that grew up with the Jag as well. Um, and, 
and also give an update on everybody on how my games are coming along um so that's it's fun it's fun to share these old games with people okay so i have two more rooms i need to go to go explore i don't need to but i'm going to because there's experience points to be gathered um this is the exit to the next dungeon which we'll be coming back to in a moment how's my food doing food's doing good okay Hey Jasper, would you be interested in seeing some development, uh, Jaguar development? I'm asking because I'm I'm thinking about spending some of these streams, these early morning streams, a few hours doing some actual programming, programming or painting. I, I I'm an artist. My day job is I, I'm an artist, and and so I've I've brought that. It's one reason why I wanted to learn to code. I want to tell stories through games, and and so I'm. I, I have a good mixture of the art and programming skills now that I can actually start producing the kind of games that I want to tell stories with. Um, and so I want to share that on the streams if people are interested. Gosh, I could have sworn there was one more room, but maybe there isn't. Come on. Oh, that's it. Okay, let's get out of here. Yeah, the um, I just don't know how interesting the development stuff will be for people. Like doing code, I I don't know if you've if you've ever done any programming before. At least the type of programming I do, it's uh, pretty bland <laughs> most of the time. I usually get stuck, and it takes me a few hours to get through a problem and find an answer or 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 change my approach. Um, and so I don't know how interesting that would be for people. I think I've done it once here on the channel, but yeah, uh, maybe what I'll do. So I use, uh, there's a couple different um, uh, programming tool sets for the Jaguar. One's called the Removers Library, uh, and a newer one is called Jag Studio, which uh, came out uh, recently. Uh, yeah, like I said, recently. And um, Right now, I use the removers library, and something I've been wanting to do before, I because I may make the jump over to Jag Studio just because it's a newer newer tool set and it has better support, um, is something I want to do with the removers library. And, and this kind of sounds silly, but I'm thinking about doing a series of videos where I do some basic tutorials for the removers library. So if somebody ever does want to pick it up and do something, there's some resources for them to start with. Um, so, because I've, I've put a lot of time <laughs> into learning that library, and it wasn't easy because there's some online documentation. It's com incomplete um, because the the main developer just simply hasn't uh, put the time into uh, updating the documents. Um, don't know why that goal didn't pick up. And so I'm I'm thinking about while I'm finishing up my next game that's coming out here soon, uh, doing some tutorials for that. Yeah, uh, me, it's, me, I actually, so um, the way I explain it to my family, I love untying knots, just like messes of knots, and that's kind of how programming feels to me. Um, and so I have the patience for it, but um, it, I can understand uh, how it would frustrate somebody because there have been problems where I, I've been stuck on, and, and it's, it's even more frustrating once you solve it and you realize how simple it actually was. It's just because you've never done it before. <laughs> so I completely understand that feeling. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably do some tutorials then. I, I think I, a few years ago, I started writing up a, a basic like curriculum, just some topics to cover. I know I have some programs, basic programs lying around where I was testing things that could easily be converted into content that people can download and and work through the tutorials and so i just don't think it'd be too much effort to get some really basic stuff put together for people to use i i kind of the the only re it, there's two reasons why i'm hesitant you already know the first it's it's i i'm a little worried people will just be bored to, bored to tears <laughs> but the other reason why is because of jag studio i i know it seems like somebody is working on 
uh, some tutorials for that. And so I'm a little worried that if I start doing tutorials and posting them, there will be um, some overlap and people might get confused. And I, I really just don't want to rock the boat if I don't have to and the community in general. And so we'll see. I, I, I have a relationship with uh, the one of the developers for Jack Studio, and so I can talk to them about it and see what they say. They may be like, whatever. Don't know. But. So just so you know, Jasper, I'm going to be on for maybe another 30 minutes. It's pretty early here where I'm at, and so I have to get to work on my day job. Um, I'm I'm just testing out these morning streams. I, I've I've been finding it difficult to be consistent when I do streams in the evening, and so I'm kind of trying out this morning thing to see if if it'll work uh, work better for me from a uh, uh, an attitude standpoint. Just uh, I'm just in a better mood in the mornings. Uh, I, th I think it might be easier to actually chat too in the mornings. So. Um, I don't consider myself the most social person, but um, I can definitely chat, especially about things I like. So, but. Yeah, so there's, I think there's ooh, 11 dungeons in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, just hop out whenever you need to. I uh, appreciate you coming by. Um I uh, I also I, I don't have it advertised here on the channel, but if you're on Instagram, uh, I do post some of my art. I haven't posted in a while. I've been kind of setting up a strategy for my online branding last year, and so I've been building a queue of content and stuff like that. But I am on Instagram if you're interested in in art. I do post so. I do a lot of Atari themed art if you're interested in Atari at all uh, from a branding standpoint. Um, I actually released a book back in 2016 for, um, it was, there's a, there's a thing in the art world called Inktober. It's where you, for a month, you do a drawing every day in October. And uh, I did that in 2016, but I themed it all around Atari and what if kind of illustration advertisements uh, for Atari consoles, um, and I, I had themes with that. And I published that in a book later that year. Um, but you can find all that artwork on my Instagram, which is, it's just, let's see here. Let's see if I can remember it. <laughs> I don't remember it. Let me pull it up. Uh, it's it's William Thorup or Thorup William. I can't remember. Let's Let's take a look. I can just go to my website. Okay. Yeah, go to my Instagram. Yeah. So it looks like it's Thorup William. So at Thorup William, if you're interested in that. And so I do a lot of painting that's not Atari related, but I do Atari related stuff. So <laughs> I have like the Atari links here. Um, I, I do some artwork and illustration for competitions. I can't enlarge it without being logged in. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I don't think I've officially announced this, um, but yeah, so the book, if you want a copy of the book, uh, the only place that's selling them now, and I'm hoping he still has some copies because you may be interested, is Atari Age. I think it's the only book he has in his store that Albert has in his store right now. I gave him a few copies a while back and said, hey, if you sell these, the money's yours. <laughs> and so if you want to support him and support me too, it's, it's a neat little book. It's, um, it's seven by eight inches, uh, something like that. And it's, it's a smaller book, but it's about 31 pages, and they're full-page illustrations. Oh, come on. It's not going to let me continue unless I log in. Here, one second. I'm going to log in. See if it'll even let me. There we go. Yeah, let me let me scroll down to a few of those illustrations from way back when. I can't believe I'm saying way back. It feels like yesterday. Oh yeah, I did this um, Christmas illustration. So these are two characters from Flappy McFur. I did. Um, 
but yeah, sorry. If I'm bragging too much, just tell me to shut up. <laughs> I'm shilling for myself quite a bit. Oh, here's, okay, here's a video. Little trailer I put together. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're referring to just the, the, the aura of the Jaguar or just the music itself. Um, Jag has a really interesting community around it. Um, there's, that, there's that whole idea that its potential was never unlocked. Um, and in some sense, that's kind of true. But I, some, some developers say that where the Jaguar is really what it was back in the 90s and the games that came out back in the 90s. And it's not about what it could have done, but how how developers actually applied what it could obviously do and and just and so that just comes down to the quality of the games in relation to what the console can do and and i think right now um oh yeah so yeah there's a there's a cd attachment for um for the jag uh those are even more expensive than the console so the console it's hard to find them under 200 dollars now the cd drive i don't think i've seen it under 800 dollars in a while that might be a little bit high. They may be a bit cheaper than that, but they they're expensive. They're very expensive and the ones that you buy I've I've heard stories uh like YouTubers and stuff like that have said that the CD units um they they sink, you know, half a grand into them and they don't work. And that's common. They are fragile machines and they aren't easy to fix because there's not a lot of people that can fix them. Um I think you can find parts fairly easy um, because it, there's a lot of off-the-shelf stuff the, the parts that fail anyways um, but they're still they're just a pain to work with um, something uh, if you look at my older streams from uh, last year you'll see that um, something that isn't emulated yet with the Atari Jaguar is the VLM the virtual light machine so when you put like a audio CD into the Jag um, there's this it's it's a visualizer like you'd see in Windows Media Player or uh, I think the Xbox had it too, um, but it was the original visualizer. Uh, the guy who made that was Jeff Minter. And so I, I, on those streams, before the stream start, I would have that up on the stream because you can't see that anywhere else but on the Jag. And it's still kind of it, its own special thing because it hasn't been successfully em emulated yet, as far as I know. So. Yeah, so the I'm going to get technical here. Uh, I believe the Jaguar can do 16-bit uh, raw audio, um, which is, isn't quite uh, uh, just the base console. Isn't quite CD quality. That might be CD quality. If you know more about audio than me, let me know. Uh, but but the CD-ROM drive will stream CD quality audio. They have uh, some sort of buffering system in there, I believe, at the hardware le level that allows games to do that. So, for example, um, I a game like in fact most of the cd games have cd quality audio running uh right off the cd during gameplay like cybermorph um or not cybermorph battlemorph and iron soldier 2 um uh, good soundtracks too and so they did the few cd games there were they used them which was awesome but yeah i did uh i got sketches for each of these drawings too um those aren't included in the book in this form these are just photos these are cheap photos I, I don't think i've ever scanned those in i should probably scan them in but the actual final illustrations they're all inked drawings but um <laughs> this one is uh the jaguar duo the the um the console that never came out it was supposed to combine the cartridge and the cd unit into one console and, but atari went bankrupt before then anyways yeah thanks for your interest i I'm hoping to, uh, oh, I was going to mention, I am planning on doing another book. I don't want to give too many details about it yet. It's going to be, it's a much, much larger project, uh, both physically and uh, and in terms of content. Uh, again, this book that's for sale right now is only about 30 pages. It's it's really cheap. I believe it's it's just over 10 bucks if you, if you want to get a copy on Atari Age. Um, he may even have it on, on discount right now. It's been a while since I've looked. Um, but uh, this next book, I'm I'm shooting somewhere around the 150-page mark, 
and I'm actually doing some writing as well. Um, I don't want to get into too many details yet because it's still kind of, it's the, the book is finding itself right now. So, but anyway, so if you're interested in, in retro gaming and art, I'm hoping to create a very interesting synthesis of those two worlds um, they, that I haven't seen in the community. Uh, in any retro community uh, myself. Again, I haven't seen everything either, so there could be something out there like that, but I'm hoping to create something really unique, something that's very Atari-centric. Uh, so if, if you are an Atari fan, it will have that, but it will also have a nostalgia factor that I think people outside of the Atari community will enjoy too. So anyways, yep. I'm, I'm thinking about breaking out my Instagram so I have a... <laughs> A page that is for my non Atari related stuff and then stuff that's for my more Atari related things. So, but anyways, yeah, let's play this for a few more minutes and I think I'm going to call it a day. Um, I don't think I've had anybody bug me yet for work. So, I'm a freelancer, so I. I have some wiggle room in my schedule, but I like to keep a schedule. I found I, uh, I'm a bit more productive, a bit more happier with my work if I keep a schedule. That's another reason why I'm interested in doing these morning streams. Um, is uh, I feel like if I do it in the morning, I have to keep to the schedule and I have to stay consistent with it. Um, anyways. Thanks. I'm I'm looking forward to get getting a real start on it. I've I've done some writing so far to explore um, a fictional plot line that will be the underpinning for the artwork. Um, I don't know if uh, if I'm there yet, but yeah, I I I really do feel it'll be a, a fun book for people who are interested in this stuff to have on their shelf and to share with other people. I'm dead. I should have healed myself. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Anyways, uh, this game's kind of cool because some stats carry over. I don't know if you heard me talking about that earlier. But some stats carry over between deaths. Um, so I think your HP stat carries over. And it seems like there's one more. I need to look at the manual. but uh, Oh, sorry. I didn't switch back over to the browser. Or gameplay. I should have done that. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. It's it's a fun game. If you're, if you're looking for a really good homebrew... Um, uh, that you can sink some hours into it if you actually play the games you buy. I know a lot of collectors, they just collect, and that's fine. But um, I, I really, I'm, I'm the kind of person that when I buy a game, I play it, um, even if I don't like it that much, uh, so I can feel like I'm getting my money's worth at least on some level. Um, and, and so if, you, if you're looking for something to play on your Jag, you'll, and you're interested in those RPG elements and roguelike games, you'll like this game. It's a really good game. Um, there's a few other games coming out uh, that aren't related to this developer that are, also look great. Um, one of them is Gravitic Minds uh, that's coming out soon. Um, it's uh, It looks great. Um, and if you're... I don't know if you ever played Oids on the Atari ST. It's kind of a gravity shooter, so it's a side view. You're in a spaceship, you spin around, and gravity's always pulling you down, and you go through these caves and caverns, rescue people, blow up turrets and stuff like that. Um, but it looks like a retail release. That's how good it looks. Uh, and it has great music. Has I think they boast something like over 30 minutes worth of music on the cartridge. It's a cartridge release, too. So, anyways. Yeah, I, I'm all about... Uh, playing the games um when i when i have time and like i said earlier i kind of recently i've been because i've been so interested in in my work in general i haven't found a lot of time to play games i actually feel a little bit guilty playing games because it's like oh, i could be working on this project or this project and so i've been i've been jag corner and the live streams this channel I, it's, I've been doing stuff for it for a long time, but it's always been in the back of my mind because it's like, well, if you want to not feel guilty about playing games, get on Jag Corner because at least you can be interacting with people who are interested in this as well and uh, and and produce stuff for them. Um, so anyways, so I'm, I'm interested in doing uh, what my audience wants me to do in relation to specifically the Atari Jaguar, but I'm planning on reaching out to some other consoles as well. I'm 
I, I, I love playing old Nintendo games, love old Nintendo games, other Atari consoles and computers like the Atari ST. Um, I may even plug in like the Sega Saturn or the uh, Nintendo 64 and play some games too. There's a few on there I wouldn't mind playing on stream. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of want to use it as a platform to promote the JAG primarily, but there will be room for other things as well. Yeah, they they um, you won't see a lot of 3D games in the homebrew realm for the Jaguar, um, but there there were a few that have been released over the last couple decades. But yeah, they there's definitely a higher there's a different quality to these modern releases, and that's because the tools are different. Uh, things are a lot easier to produce, especially in regards to um, art assets and music. It's just it's there's really no reason if you're interested to make games now, uh, because the barrier to entry is so minimal. So, yeah. But, well, Jasper, I'm going to call it a day. Uh, if uh, I hope I hope you enjoyed this game. Um, I don't have a schedule for my live streaming yet. I want to get a consistent day at least, and hopefully a time. Um, I'll try to get those scheduled beforehand so notifications get put up on my Facebook page, Twitter profile, and here on YouTube as well. Um, and so you'll know when future streams are, but I'm planning at least for the next few streams, just doing some homebrew games, uh, as I start to figure out how I'm going to format, uh, streams for programming and stuff like that. But yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks for joining me, Jasper. Thanks for joining me. Anybody else who's on the stream? I haven't looked at the analytics. Maybe I should take a look, see if anybody, anybody else has been on. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, there's been a few people that have popped in and out. Um, it's good to see. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, Jasper, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Bye.